Hey, happy holidays, everybody. Welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. This one's going out to uh, John Quackers. Says, I didn't get a rundown, dot, 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 dot. Yeah, you did. Enjoy. The first batch of DLC for Call of Duty Infinite Warfare has been announced, and it's no mirage, it's sabotage. The first DLC included in the game's season pass is called Sabotage, and as usual, it gives players four new maps. Two of them, called Noir and Renaissance, are futuristic versions of Brooklyn and Venice. The third map is called Neon and thrusts players inside a virtual combat simulator where objects can materialize and disappear at any time. The fourth map, Dominion, is a remake of the popular Modern Warfare 2 map, Afghan, only this time it's getting its ass to Mars and is set on the Red Planet. The Sabotage expansion also includes a new chapter in the game Zombies campaign called Rave in the Redwoods. While the first chapter, Zombies in Spaceland, was set in the 1980s, this one goes full 90s. Players will find themselves in a 90s-style teen slasher film with zombies, which takes place in a rave that's happening out in the woods. It smells like zombie spirit. The Sabotage DLC will deploy January 31st as a timed exclusive on the PS4. Activision recently revealed that they're going to deliver more new content for the last Call of Duty game, Black Ops 3, and we'll have more intel on that when it comes in. You haven't seen the last of the characters from Rogue One. Disney has revealed that Forrest Whitaker will reprise his role as the Empire-fighting terrorist Saw Gerrera in the animated series Star Wars Rebels. The show takes place a few years before the events of the film, which means this version of Saw will be a little younger, and according to executive producer Dave Filoni, he won't be quite as beaten down by his fight against the Empire. It might be a little misleading to call Saw Gerrera a Rogue One character. He was actually first introduced in the last animated series, The Clone Wars, but wasn't portrayed by Forrest Whitaker until the film. Disney recently stated that although they have no plans to make a direct sequel to Rogue One, the characters can pop up in other stories. Star Wars Rebels will return with new episodes in January. Never thought I'd meet another Jedi, much less two. Retiring Replicants is still just as messy as it was 30 years ago. The highly anticipated sequel, Blade Runner 2049, will be rated R like the original film and won't have a watered-down PG-13 rating like most modern movies. That's according to the film's director, Denis Villeneuve, who tells Screen Daily that they always intended to make the film with an R rating, and his producers are constantly reminding him that it will be one of the most expensive R-rated films ever made. Big studios are typically nervous about spending a lot of money on R-rated movies because they usually make less money thanks to the fact that fewer people are allowed to see them. The surprise box office success of the R-rated Deadpool earlier this year has helped change that way of thinking, so we'll be seeing more big R-rated movies in the near future. There's more good news about Blade Runner 2049. In the same interview with Screen Daily, Denis Villeneuve adds that he's using as little CGI as possible, preferring to have more practical effects in order to make the film look more like the original. Villeneuve mixed practical effects with minimal CGI in his last movie, Arrival, and if Blade Runner 2049 looks half as good, count us in. The new movie will hit Earth and the off-world colonies next October. Things were simpler then. Acclaimed filmmaker Wes Anderson is skipping CGI for his next project. Following the success of his last film, The Grand Budapest Hotel, Wes Anderson has revealed the first details on his next movie. It's called Isle of Dogs, and like his 2009 film, Fantastic Mr. Fox, it will be an animated animal adventure that uses the old-fashioned stop-motion animation technique. Anderson has even released the first footage from the new movie. Can we roll that sneak preview now? That was it. Hopefully we'll be seeing more from Isle of Dogs in the coming months. It's scheduled to hit theaters in 2018. Capcom wants to give players a new way to check out some of the best 8-bit animation in history. All six of the original Mega Man games, originally released on the NES, will be hitting iOS and Android devices next month. This will be the first time all six of the games will be available on mobile devices, with the exception of Mega Man 2, which was first ported to iOS in 2009. That port was universally despised, so hopefully Capcom will have better luck with the new versions. It's not easy to port the classic Mega Man games. They're known for their extremely precise controls, something that is very hard to recreate on mobile devices, so external controller support seems like a must. If you want to relive the classic Mega Man games right now, they've already been ported to pretty much every modern platform. The Mega Man Legacy Collection hit the PS4, Xbox One, PC, and 3DS last year, and Mega Man 2 is one of 30 games included in the new NES Classic, but good luck trying to get your hands on one of those. And that wraps us up for The Rundown, everybody. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new one.
Hey, look at that. We are reunited again at the end of a video. Thank you so much for watching. Listen, we have a review that you must watch. It's our Assassin's Creed movie review that I did with Happy Console Gamer. Please watch that before you buy a ticket. And if you dig it, please hit subscribe.